Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we'll talk about radio immunodiffusion. So let's get started. So before talking about all the steps and how it is performed, we'll talk about the principle of radial immunodiffusion. So the single radial immunodiffusion is used extensively for the quantitative estimation of antigens. The antigen antibody uh, antigen antibody precipitation is made more sensitive by incorporation of antiserum in the agnose. So it's a very simple procedure in which let's just take a plate like this in which we'll add in which we'll add a solution which will be containing an antiserum or an antibody throughout in this beaker or a plate and in this we'll duck three holes or two holes in which we'll pour in the antigen so this is as simple as this so this is just a preview i'll be explaining you the entire steps in the coming parts so the antigen is then allowed to diffuse from the wells cut in the gel in which the antiserum is uniformly distributed and initially as the antigen diffuses out of the well its concentration is relatively high and soluble and thus the antigen antibody ducts are formed so as i said there will be three wells or there can be two wells as well so in which will pour in the antigen so these holes in which will pour in the antigens and the entire this thing plate will contain the antiserum or the antibody so these antigens will be reacting with the antiserum present in the medium and this will lead to formation of circles around them or we call them as precipitation curve or circles so however as antigen diffuses farther from the well the antigen antibody complex reacts with more and more amount of antibody resulting in a lattice that precipitates to form a precipitating ring so basically it forms a ring structure around the antigen so the larger the ring the more the concentration of antigen and thereby we can indicate the concentration of an unknown antigen as well so so this can be uh, done by running a range of known antigen concentration on the gel and by measuring the diameters of the precipitating rings a calibration is uh, a calibration graph is plotted at the end so after we have done the air uh, perform the entire experiment of uh, pouring the antigen and uh, seeing the rings around them all right so these rings are plotted or a standard curve is plotted on a graph paper and thereby we can uh, understand the or take out the antigen concentration of unknown samples as well so antigen concentrations of unknown sample run on the uh, same gel can be found by measuring the diameter of precipitating gels and extrapolating this value on calibration graph so this is as i said we'll take these uh, what you call the precipitating rings so the known concentration we know so the with the help of known concentration we'll plot the graph and with the help of standard curve we can know the or determine the antigen concentration of unknown samples so this is how we do i'll be showing you entirely this so this is a figure in real how it looks so these are the holes dug in in which will pour the antigens and the entire solution or the entire plate consists of antiserum so when the antiserum reacts with the antigen it results in formation of these circles these white circles as you can see or these precipitating rings so these precipitating rings help us to determine the concentration of antigens so moving with that so let's just talk about the kit what it consists of so in this kit a standard antigen at four different uh, concentration so which is uh, which are these 0 0.25 0 0.5 1 and 2 mg per ml are supplied along with two test antigen samples so test uh, test antigen samples are the unknown ones and these samples are allowed to diffuse in a agarose gel containing antiserum so these are allowed to diffuse in a medium or in a plate which consists of the antiserum. So the diameter of precipitating ring thus formed will be measured and plotted against the standard antigens concentration to obtain a standard curve. Using this, the concentration of two antigens will be determined. So as I said previously, so we'll plot the plot a car, uh, plot a graph with the known concentration of antigens in the x and the y-axis, and with the help of a standard curve, we can denote or uh, we can find out the concentration of unknown antigens so moving on with so let's just talk about the duration of the experiment so the duration is carried over a span of two days 
approximate time taken on each day is indicated below which is one hour for preparation of gel and loading of antigen sample and the day two is 30 minutes of observation and interpretation so this is totally carried out in two days so the amount of work is just one and a half hours but it will take two days in which first uh, one hour will be taken in the first day and 30 minutes will be taken in the second day for interpretation and observation so moving on so this is, these are the materials that are required for performing this experiment which is the aqueous gel uh, we have the buffer as well we have the antigen samples standard antigens this is the unknown concentration of antigens this is the anti serum which is the most important part and we need a gel puncher to dug in the wells or make wells on the uh, solution of antigens or in the entire gel and we need a glass plate and with a template as well so these are the number of items that we require and just some of the important stuff that i want to discuss here which are the reading the entire procedure before starting the experiment please dilute the amount of 10x assay buffer to 1x with distilled water because dilution is very important and reconstitution of the antigen vials with 0.35 ml of 1x assay buffer and mix well and store at 4 degrees use, use with 3 months use within 3 months yeah. so these are simple information also reconstituting the anti serum vials with 2 ml of 1x buffer mix well and store at 4 degrees so the mixing or the making of a gel on a plate like this requires a lot of uh, complications so these need to be made absolutely perfect so that when we dug in the wells and poured in the antigens they must react and form precipitin rings like this so thereby if it does not form rings we cannot know or determine the concentration of the unknown antigens all right so mixing of uh, it with buffer and with distilled water is very important and all of the cutting the wells neatly with the rough margins and a perfect ring then addition of anti serum to agarose gel only after it cools to 55 degrees and higher the temperature will inactivate the antibody so we need to wait for the particular temperature to reach to 55 degrees and then we add the anti serum and the assay buffer is used which we known as the phosphate buffered saline which will be mixed with the anti serum all right so buffer is very important which will be added to the agarose gel then we'll add in the anti serum to make the entire gel so this is a procedure of a gel which in which we need to note all of these that about the procedure so we'll prepare 10 ml of 1% agarose in 1x buffer by heating slowly till the agarose dissolves completely and taking care not to scorch or rot the solution also the second step which says that the allowing the molten agarose to cool to 55 degrees as set up before also addition of 120 microliters of anti serum to 6 ml of agarose solution and mixing it by gentle swirling for uniform distribution of antibody so after making of agarose we'll add on the anti serum and we'll let it to solidify and uh, after that we'll punch it the wells and thereby we'll add 20 microliters of given standard antigens as well as test antigens to the well as shown in the figure 2 which i'll be showing you so we will add on the which i will add the anti serum first with the agarose then we'll dug in wells and then we'll pour in the antigens but with that this is how it looks like so these are this is as simple as this so these are here it contains some of the known samples as well as some of the test samples so here you can see there are four standard antigens with known concentrations named as one two three and four and there are two unknown concentration named as five and six so another some of the more procedures are keeping the gel plate in the moist chamber and incubate overnight at room temperature mark the edges of the circle and measure the diameter of the ring and then we'll plot the time uh, the graph of diameter of the ring versus the concentration of antigens so this is very simple i'll show you a graph in this uh, video as well so the y-axis will consist of the diameter of the ring or the diameter of the precipitin ring that is formed around the antigen uh, versus the concentration of antigens on the x-axis and we'll determine the concentration of unknown by reading the concentration against the ring diameter so this is very simple so this is a very this is a, for example we took this uh, these are the samples these are the four known concentration unknown antigen concentration samples 
well, with these uh, diameter rings these values are diameter rings these are the standard antigen concentration and this is the test sample uh, whose concentration we do not know so this is the concentration we need to find out this is very simple this is how we'll find out so here you can see that the ring diameter on the y-axis and the antigen concentration on the x-axis so all the antigen concentrations are present here and we have the ring diameter so the unknown concentration can be fi found out by finding the ring diameter so let's say the ring diameter is 11 for the unknown one so we'll draw a line here and along with that we'll straight pull that so before that we'll uh, look for all the known concentrations. So there are there were four known concentration antigen samples. So we'll plot them first. So we'll plot. So we have plotted them in this case. So these are the four points: one, two, and three, and four. So these are the four points of antigen known concentration, and we'll draw a line, which will be very much uh, meeting them all. So after drawing a line, we'll find out the unknown concentration by finding out the diameter ring or finding out the diameter of the precipitin ring so let's say if the the ring diameter is 11 so from 11 we'll put a line here and the intersecting line with this line this particular line will draw a line correspondingly here and thereby we can get the concentration of the unknown concentration antigen concentration so let's just keep this video till here hope you enjoyed this video do like share and subscribe and thanks for watching